farmer and founder and president of the nonprofit National Black Farmers Association, which fought for these payouts that have now gone out. John, welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. Explain the significance um, of what's happening right now. Amy, thank you so much for having me, and it's always good to, to uh, spend time with you. This is a very, very uh, historic uh, payout for black farmers, and, and I see it as a huge win for myself and the, the National Black Farmers Association. I've worked on this for nearly four decades. Uh, so basically, uh, 60,000 uh, applications uh, were turned in, 45,000 uh, black farmers and other farmers of color uh, have begun uh, receiving checks uh, this week and the latter part of, of last week. Uh, so it's very, very good news and a total of uh, $2 billion. Uh, so we've been waiting for this payout for a long time. And uh, we, the MBFA went out and held 60 meetings, uh, Amy, and, and FaceTime uh, with uh, our members. We sent out 130,000 uh, postcards in the mail to all of our members, uh, telling them how to apply for this. It took us, Amy, on average, three to three and a half hours to help each and every uh, uh, black farmer fill out this 40-page application, so it was a very extensive uh, uh, process. And uh, so we were glad to get the news that uh, from Stephen Benjamin at the White House actually called me and told me uh, that the checks were actually going out to to farmers around the country. So we see this as a huge significance of farmers who are facing foreclosure. We have a lot of black farmers in our, in our organization that were facing foreclosure. So these payments are timely. Uh, it's going to help them stay on the farm or help them improve the equipment, help them pay taxes. Uh, and I'm not saying it's a whole holistic fix, but it's certainly uh, a huge thumb up for us. And Amy, we're still pushing for the $5 billion in debt relief. So I'm asking the administration uh, to do that by executive order. That's what I've been uh, having conversations with the White House uh, to uh, still get the $5 billion. That's the land that's owned by many black farmers that have their deeds of trust uh, tied up with the United States Department of Agriculture. And again, that's a decade old uh, request as well. And could you explain the difference between the payments and the debt relief? Absolutely. The payments, like you, you heard uh, Secretary Vilsack mention, is, uh, is it was those uh, black farmers and uh, farmers of color who experienced discrimination prior to 2021. Uh, so that was just about everybody in our organization that fit that definition. Uh, so that that piece was totally separate than the actual debt relief, which is a 120 percent. We were promised uh, black farmers who were eligible for that were sent the, the necessary form in the mail telling them how much debt relief they were going to get and the 20 percent to pay their taxes. Uh, we all of our members sent them back in. And then after that, uh, white farmers started suing us in federal court around the country in numerous federal courts and two temporary injunctions, uh, one in Florida and the other in Texas, blocking the $5 billion uh, in, in debt relief to uh, black and other farmers of color. And then uh, we began to uh, file motions in federal court. And after we began to make some traction there, a few wins, the administration repealed it by an act of Congress and replaced it with some of these other measures. So we still want our land, our land, like you talked about at the beginning of the show. We, uh, at the turn of the century, own 20 million acres of land. Today, we're down, as Black farmers, three and a half million acres. At the turn of the century, we were tilling, uh, there were one million Black farm families in the United States. Today, we're down to about 50,000 full-time uh, uh, Black farmers. So the land, as uh, my daddy and grandfather taught me, the land is everything. The land is uh, food. The land is water. The land is timber to build houses on. Everything comes great from the land, and we want our land. That's, and, and that's what I've been after for this whole campaign, and I John, spoke to you about it before. John, you mentioned your father. You are a fourth-generation black farmer. Can you describe yes. your own experience of discrimination? You don't often talk about that in your national interviews. You're, you're right. And, and my, I want to give a thumbs up to my daddy, the greatest man I knew in the flesh. Uh, not because he had any money, but because the way he carried himself. He was a dignified, humble uh, a black farmer that worked hard every day. Every day that pickup truck rolled in the turn, man, he was ready to go to work. And we worked sun up to sundown uh, together. 
and said very few words, but the discrimination that I faced at USDA was in your face discrimination. And uh, I was spat on uh, with tobacco juice running down my shirt on one particular loan application with the, the lender who was a federal employee who was employed by a government, spat on me. I, I, I was called the N-word uh, from this same uh, official. I had my application torn up and thrown in a trash can in, in front of me. Uh, on average, uh, it, it took 387 days to process a black farmer's loan request, less than 30 days to process a white farmer's loan request. In that particular county, this, this person would only see black farmers one day of the week. So we named it Black Wednesday. And we all would be in the hallway trying to apply for loans and uh, one day we all just looked at our letters from USDA and it said 9 a.m. Wednesday uh, for, for all of us is going to see us all at the same time. And if a white farmer came in, Amy, he would bring that farmer into the office and conduct business as though I wasn't even there. And his voice changed and it was, his pleasant trees were happy. And then when he turned around and, and spoke to me, he said he wasn't going to lend me any of his money. And he often spoke about uh, how powerful he was. He said he was the most powerful man in the county and the next thing to God. And I told him one day, I don't know what God looked like. I wasn't the religious man I am today. John, but we I just told, have 20 seconds. Well, I want people to know uh, this is a big win and don't never ever give up. The arc of justice been slow. It been slower for black people, but I never gave up. I never gave in and I, and I kept pushing forward. And we won, and we're going to win that $5 billion, too. I want to thank you so much for being with us. John Boyd, fourth-generation black farmer, founder and president of the nonprofit National Black Farmers Association.